Um, but for our next um, speakers, I want to introduce two very special speakers. Um, they're going to be talking about unlocking the internet of things with specifically telco APIs. Um, I want to welcome Michelle Howie, who is the developer advocate at Telstra, and also Aaron Ball, who is the collaboration and mobility evangelist at Four. So welcome. Um, as one of Australia's largest telcos, um, Telstra definitely faces some interesting problems. So today, Michelle and Aaron will be talking about how Telstra is expanding their developer program to provide the APIs and Internet of Things offerings that can leverage mobile networks and how to grow the Internet of Things ecosystem. Um, so I can see your slides are up. Take it away. Thank you, Catherine, and thank you everyone here at API Days for joining in. I am Michelle and I'm dialing in today from Ghana land, which is in Adelaide. Uh, what about you, Aaron? Where are you dialing in from today? Uh, I'm in Brisbane, which is terrible land. Terrible land. Cool. So I just want to start by acknowledging um, those lands I'm meeting on today and where all of you guys are today, whether that's in Australia or somewhere else. Um, so I'm from Telstra. Hopefully you guys have heard of Telstra. Um, it's Australia's largest telecommunications company. Um, and there's lots of things with Telstra. We've been around for over 100 years with you know, $44 billion of assets. And like any telco, there's a lot of complexity um, back there. But increasingly, our customers, you know, they don't care about that. They don't care about the legacy. They just want to have um, a really good experience, digital experiences, and make it easy for them and for their customers. And that's where APIs come in. Um, so especially when you think about the Internet of Things, where there's billions of connected devices, with lots of different vendors, lots of different apps who bring their own complexity, um, all locking into different backend softwares. So you can imagine that with the internet of things, it's really important um, to make it simple. And that's what I'm here to talk about today, how we're making it simple. Um, I am joined by one of our Telstra partners here, um, Aaron, who's from Four, um, and he'll introduce himself in a second. But the reason we've got Four along today and Aaron to speak um, at API Days with us is because they're just one of our Telstra partners that really uses the APIs to make their customers and their customers' customers' lives easier. So we hope this presentation adds to a bit of a culture shift that we think the Internet of Things needs um, to be more API-led. Um, I invite you to ask questions anytime in the in the chat feature and hop in. If you are watching this um, or as a recording on YouTube, feel free to reach out to us after to have um, any other questions. So a little bit about me so you know who's talking to you today. Um, I'm the developer advocate for Telstra's developer program. Before that, I was at the 5G Innovation Centre on the Gold Coast, where Telstra launched the Australia's first 5G network. Um, I really believe that technology is an enabler for all of the, you know, the wicked problems and wicked challenges in the world. Um, and I think networks really underpin all of those technologies as well, which is why I'm in Telstra, who's a global leader in a lot of those things. Um, what about you, Aaron? Oh, thank you. Um, my name is Aaron. I'm from Four. Um, I'm a collaboration and mobility evangelist, and my role is really to help our customers use technology to deliver outcomes for their businesses and to take advantage of the fourth industrial revolution. Our unique proposition, uh, unlike other software vendors, is that we don't jam our customers um, into our apps. We make our apps fit the customers. Um, our goal is really to keep our customers' businesses special. Uh, our customer base is diverse. We've got small operators with half a dozen staff to customers listed on the NYSX, uh, sorry, the uh, ASX and uh, NYSE. And I just loved hearing about um, for how Ford is actually using APIs, not just Telstra's APIs. Um, and we'll hear a bit about that today, which is why I absolutely wanted Aaron to come along with API Days with us before. And I was actually at API Days Australia last year as well. And the Telstra developer advocates have been there before me. But um, yeah, I really thought it was important to have one of our customers along with us and Telstra partners. So the too long didn't read of today's session, um, essentially we're going to be talking about how the telco core is really made up of building blocks. Um, and those building blocks are much, easily, much easier access via APIs than traditional methods. So APIs being the building blocks. The next thing is the Internet of Things, which is incredible and there's so much potential for greatness with the IoT, but it brings lots of devices, lots of apps and added complexity potentially. So my, our proposition to make that simpler is by using APIs and helping your customers 
work with your IoT solutions, or if you are someone, if you are an IoT user, how you can use APIs to make things easier for you. Um, and underpinning all of that, you can't have an API program that's not focusing on developer experience. And in an emerging technology like IoT, that's essentially really important. And I'll get into a bit of that as well. So that's that's the too long didn't read of today, but let's get into it. So what is IoT? The Internet of Things is the billions of connected devices on the internet. And there's a lot of things to consider when you're building out an IoT solution. One of those things people don't usually think about too much, but one that I'm obviously very excited about is the network and what network you use to connect your IoT device. And even one company or one business solution could have many different IoT networks. It could be a mixture of Bluetooth, satellite, good old Ethernet cable, standard 4G, 5G. Um, but the one I want to talk about today is the low power wide area cellular network. So cellular means I mean, put a SIM in it, essentially. Um, so I've just got a um, map, map there, a coverage map of the Telstra Narrowband IoT network. And the other one we have is the LTE M CAT M1 network. And they're different because there are lower frequencies than standard 4G and 5G. Now there still are 4G and 5G technologies, um, but they're just operating in a lower frequency, which means um, we can get better coverage. So uh, actually the narrowband IoT network has over 4 million square kilometers. That's great, obviously, for rural and regional areas around Australia. Australia has very unique coverage solutions with the Internet of Things. So if you're dialing in from overseas, um, this map may not look that impressive, but it really is considering the population density we have here, um, which means, you know, with lower power networks, you can get further from the base station, further from the mobile tower, so up to 100, actually 120 kilometres. I think we broke a record recently on that. Being a low power network compared to 4G, 5G and some other technologies. Um, you have increased battery life on those devices. You're able to get updates over the air, that's OTA updates, um, inherently more secure. And like I said, it's it's pre-ready for 5G standards. So that's just a bit of background on the IoT. I know this is API Days conference, but the APIs we talk about next will make more sense if you know about the IoT. So talking about IoT, that's just one of the bread and butter solutions that a telco would have. So you guys would know, you know telcos provide SIMs, phones, calling, cloud, and all of that. And traditionally, they're uh, made available off the shelf. So a customer, enterprise, a business can go and buy those solutions off the shelf and start using them, which makes it easy to get started. They're complete products, which is fantastic. This is extending to the internet of things as well. Telstra actually already has you know, uh, vehicles and drones and cows already connected to the internet. So when you want insights from those IoT devices, having them available off the shelf with a, as a full solution is great to make it easy to get started. You know, you use the dashboard that the device came with. It's great for onboarding, um, easy access to information, but it's inherently less flexible and harder to actually scale. So imagine you've got IoT devices from this vendor and that vendor, and you want them to talk to a different system. Having different dashboards for everyone isn't really helpful, but that's where APIs come in. So instead of having um, off the shelf products, you also make those IoT solutions available via API so that the developers at your different companies and customers can actually integrate them into their existing systems or interoper interoperability with other vendors. Um, so as a developer advocate at Telstra, I get to speak to our customers pretty regularly, whether they're an enterprise and government or a startup or a university research lab, everyone agrees that having things available via API is much more repeatable and um, useful. And you can imagine why, especially when you have billions of connected devices on, on the internet. Um, but that's enough about me. I think you guys get the gist now of IoT and APIs. Um, I'm going to get Aaron to explain a bit about the APIs that he uses um, and why they make customers easier to work with the Internet of Things and integrate them. Perfect. Thank you, Michelle. So today I want to touch on track and monitor. Uh, as you can see, there were several different track and monitor hardware devices for different use cases. Uh, what we've seen is the larger solar unit you can see on your screen now is really uh, great on shipping containers and trailers and leverages Telstra's CAT M1 network. Uh, the smaller units there, uh, Bluetooth units, lower cost and use Telstra's Bluetooth finding community. Uh, I've seen them go on smaller assets like construction equipment, uh, and I'll touch more on that in the next slide in a moment. Probably two use cases I really want to cover today. Um, 
One is a uh, construction company. The other is a uh, transport company. So the first has got multiple vehicle tracking telematics vendors. Um, some of these are OEM, some are aftermarket. These devices are generally installed under the dashboard, collect information on the engine location, send this to the vendor's proprietary platform. Uh, in this instance, the customer already had three or four different vendors and didn't want to introduce another login, password, website, and so forth for the staff to remember. Uh, using our IoT platform, we're able to really aggregate all this data together from the different vendors uh, and give the business users, users a single pane of glass to see all their assets. Um, this made the decision easy to bring on Telstra Tracker Monitor for their non-powered assets like trailers. Uh, the second company uh, wanted to track non-powered assets. So in their organization, there's currently no visibility of these assets. Uh, if a site manager requires a tool, uh, there's not one on site, they hire it. So now we've worked with them and they've installed these smaller Bluetooth track and monitor units on tools like concrete cutters and air compressors. Um, so we're taking this data from the Telstra track and monitor API and making it available to the site managers throughout the organization. And whilst the location uh, and visibility is the primary use case and provides a, a solid ROI, the side benefits are asset utilization over time and cost recovery to projects. Yeah, I think when I heard these examples, I definitely related to that. Not that I you know, own a, a construction company or anything, but I guess anyone listening to this call who's tried to set up some IoT devices at home will know that often when you buy something, if it's a, a light bulb or a water sensor or a door lock, usually they come with a different app and it gets quite difficult and frustrating to manage when you have to have a different app for everything. Imagine that at an enterprise scale. So even though this track and monitor Telstra solution essentially just gives you some basic things like the location or the velocity of your um, device, when you pair that with something else, that's what makes it um, really powerful. So actually, the out of our five biggest customers for track and monitor, four of them use the API, and the customer that uses the API that, that uses this product the most, they don't actually use the off-the-shelf dashboard that track and monitor comes with. So if anyone out there is looking at creating an IoT solution, if you're IoT providers and you're here at API Days because you're thinking, hmm, do I need an API? The answer is always yes. Um, there was a great presentation yesterday um, about the pitfalls of API strategies. And I think as soon as you start doubting, you know, do we need an API? Just have a, a listen to these sort of figures. And yeah, our, our biggest customers that spend the most money with this product want the API more than, than anything else. Um, what a, Aaron, what do you think is really critical to to an IoT vendor, like what do you look at when you're helping your customers pick pick one? Ah, good question. I think first is really how long does it take to get that first hello world? Um, you know, does does there extensive documentation? Uh, in in your example, there is, and also the Postman file. You've really invested in making it very simple to download the Postman file, uh, use the web based interface to create credentials, uh, pop those in one of the examples and get a result immediately. So it's it's the experience is probably critical. Um, and in Telstra's case, what we found is we get access to the product owner or the product owners. We get access to the DevOps team, which is um, surprised me. Um, yeah, shout out to shout out to Postman who might be out listening there today. I'm sure everyone's used Postman before. I think um, API providers can really underestimate the power that that is. And Aaron, you called out you know, the time to first hello world is just so important and having it a quick tool and like collections is really important for that. Um, it's funny, like when I ask about IoT vendors for you, you go straight to like the API side. Like, would you even consider working with um, vendors that don't have an API? Is that a deal breaker Probably for you? not. No, 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 definitely not. And you're not just saying that because we're at API days. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we don't want to scrape. Scraping is, is so, you know, people don't want to scrape anymore. People expect an API to be there. Uh, yeah, so like if you're, like I said, if you're considering an IoT solution, it's not even an option these days to have an API because, you know, at the end, you can't have a single pane of glass with that. So you're really just locking, locking customers out that want to work with you. And, and like I mentioned a moment ago, I think access to the product owner uh, and the DevOps team is great. So if there's a feature that we would like to see, um, we get to have that direct input. Um, we get to see, you know, that get developed, Telstra's and your team has come back to us asking us more questions about it, which is, 
which is really, really good and probably unexpected from Telstra. That's funny. That leads me to my next slide, which is about the developer experience. And it's funny because that's how I actually met Aaron and, and Four as a company because um, I was going out as a developer advocate, um, learning about how people use our APIs, you know, what more could we do with them? And we we're looking at some really specific um, examples, like how do you access your keys? How do you see your logs? Um, and yeah, so these conversations are really important. So anyone out there that has APIs and doesn't have a developer advocacy program or an experience program, um, come and chat to me. I'm happy to give you some, some examples and tips. Um, but this is central to all API programs, right? It's no longer enough for Telstra to be a good telco. It's no longer enough for Telstra to have a good network and good devices and things like that. We have to be um, giving customers what they expect because they are out there using digital native, cloud native services and expecting self-service and completely online 24 seven things. So like I said, we can't really rest on our laurels. We have to really be being API first. So if you're listening to this, you're already doing the right thing by getting into APIs. Um, so I wanna uh, start wrapping up by showing you some of the things that developers have told us were the most important things our API program to, to change and that we've launched in the last 12 months. So um, Telstra has actually been coming along to API days um, for a couple of years now. Um, I can't wait until API Days Australia will be back um, in person again so we can see you all um, in our offices. Um, but anyway, here are some of the things we've been working on. All of these things were suggested by customers, prioritized by customers, and they were involved in the design and planning of them. So the first one up the top there um, is our new documentation experience. So we were told it's the, one of the most important things, just like Aaron said, is the time to first hello world with your API. So being able to have clear documentation that explains what the API does and how to get started in as little words as possible. We've also added in as part of that documentation tutorials in different code languages, um, really descriptive error messages, and it's all working towards having developers be able to self-serve really. Um, so I can sort of get out of their way. I'm there if they need it, but I don't want to be in anyone's way. Um, the next thing we've been working on is support. So again, Aaron mentioned one of the key things about um, one of the best things um, of working with us so far has been you can actually talk directly to the DevOps team that's building the API. So it's kind of underestimated and people don't really realize that with um, our APIs, we actually have a dedicated support team that actually is building the API. So you can speak directly to um, the engineering um, DevOps team. We've been growing that team and focusing on self-service. So another tip out there for anyone that has an API program, developers have told us they want to be able to solve a problem at 9 p.m. at night and not have to wait till you know, 9 a.m. Monday for a resolution. So People don't expect you to be 24-7 you know, answering their call, but they want to be able to fix the problem themselves. So um, we'll, we'll keep improving and working on that. And next, the next thing that's underestimated is how often you update things like SDKs. So we've recently gone through and refactored um, the top two uh, programming languages for our software development kits. They've been really useful. Things like making them full parity to the API, making sure that nothing is missed, like none of the um, services you can get with the API the miss in the SDK. So developers told us that was really important. Fair enough. Um, and the last thing we've, we've put in recently um, is a feedback mechanism. So I, of course I'm reaching out and talking to customers all the time, but some people just want to leave a quick quick rating, quick review. Um, and that's that's happy. I'm happy for that too. Um, so we're always looking to speak to new API developers. If you're out there and want to have your, your needs, your ideas, your voices heard by, by me and the team, um, please reach out. My email address will be in the, the last slide. Um, is there anything here missing, Aaron? Anything here when it comes to developer experience that, that you think is really important when using an API? No, I, no, I think you've covered it quite well. And um, like I said, Telstra really is making the investment now into documentation, the tools, and making it really easy for anyone uh, to pick it up and, and work with it um, within minutes. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. And all of that is part of our, our, our developer portal. Um, which is devs.telstra.com. We've got a couple of APIs on there. It's constantly growing. I think um, if you guys, I want to actually ask you if, if anyone in the audience here um, has interactions with Telstra that they would rather do via API, let me know. Please challenge us, um, push us to have more and more things um, by API. Um, yeah, that's that's probably one thing that I'll, I'll ask everyone to do. <laughs> um, and that's, that's all we had time for, like all we had prepared to talk about today. I really would like to make this more of an open and continuous conversation. So um, do keep in touch. Um, there's our email addresses there. And we're all over Twitter. So I, I love a good Twitter feed. If you guys are watching this now, you can take a screenshot and post it. Um, I've also got up there um, 
What is this, Aaron? What's, what have we got on the screen here? I've got a four a four rack of uh, Daytonas in the office. So if you're ever coming through Adelaide, um, reach out and um, have a turn. Oh, that's so good. I almost pretty much grew up in a bowling centre and I used to play these things all the time. So I can't wait to go to the Adelaide office and have a look at that. Um, if you if you liked hearing about Internet of Things and you want to hear more about Internet of Things, um, I actually co-host the Oz IoT Meetup. So shout out to developer Steve and developer Ali, um, other developer advocates around Australia that that help co-host this meetup. Um, we're on Discord, we're on YouTube, and we have meetups um, every month. So please join the community there. We'd love to have more API developers um, on board. We actually have uh, our next meetup is next week, and we're talking about uh, diversity and robots in IoT. So that's very exciting. Um, and last but not least, uh, I'd love to thank the whole team for API of API Days. Thank you for dialing in, whether you're here live or you're watching a recording. Um, it's really great to be part of this community. I've learned so much in the last two days. Um, and yeah, thanks for Deloitte API Days and especially for, you know, I didn't force you guys to be here, but it was really, really great to um, yeah, have a chat with you um, online today, Aaron. Cool, no, thank you for the opportunity. Anytime. Okay, um, thank you um, for such an interesting talk. I really loved hearing more about the customer perspective as well as um, the perspective from like a developer advocate. Um, one of the questions that we do have in the chat is um, what are some of the challenges in keeping the documentation for your APIs relevant and updated to different use cases and customers? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, so my team that I sit at in Telstra is the Telstra Developer Portal. So the entire portal that um, exposes all of the APIs. So I really have a challenge because all of the APIs are managed by different teams. So as you can imagine, it's really hard to have like a centralized API team. Um, these days, it's actually really good to have APIs integrated into all different products, which of course, if it's not centralized, it makes it more complex. So I think having product owners who are looking after the APIs and really see the value in them, they're more likely to keep updating the documentation. So, um, you know, shout out to the, the product teams on track and monitor, even though it's not an API product itself, this API is just one part of a really big product. Um, yeah, having a product manager who really cares about the API keeping it up to date is really important. Um, I also find that getting feedback from customers and users really helps. So I'm really close to the support team. So as a developer advocate, I'm going through all of the support requests we get, all the issues customers are facing, and you kind of have to look at the implicit um, suggestions. So uh, someone's not going to go out right out and say, hey, Michelle, you need to fix this. They would say, I've had a problem with this, or I'm really struggling to do this. And you've got to really think that it's never the user's fault. Like you obviously haven't explained it well enough if they didn't get it in, in one step. So um, in terms of keeping them up to date with use cases, that was probably, you know, I don't really come from an API background. I'm from networks engineering, actually. So I'm used to you know, 5G and IoT, but APIs is kind of new to me, which is good because, well, new to me, I've been here for over two years, but new enough. Um, I really love talking to people and asking them, hey, what are you doing with the API? Like, show me your use case. How is it helping you? Which is obviously how I met Aaron and four. Um, so the more I talk to people as a developer advocate, the more I hear about use cases and then can start adding them into our documentation. So I think if, if you take anything from this presentation, it's having a developer advocate who's um, part of your API program is probably one of the most important things for keeping your documentation and your use cases up to date. Um, Aaron, did you have anything else to add? No, I think you've covered it, covered it very well. Easy. Good question. <laughs> Another question that I have, and I think it's probably on everyone's mind, is do you have to be a Telstra customer to use these APIs? Good question. So there's kind of a difference between a API that is a product in itself and an API that's attached to another product. So track and monitor, for example, you have to already have a Telstra track and monitor device or a couple of devices to be able to use the API. And that kind of makes sense because all the API essentially does is give you information about the Telstra device that you have. We have other APIs though that are self-contained products in themselves, like the messaging API. So you don't have to have any other Telstra services. You can go in and start sending SMSs and MMSs with that API. So the answer is no, you don't need to be an existing Telstra customer, 
but it depends on, on the API. So we have a, a couple of new APIs that have just been released and most of them are attached to products, um, but we have some yeah, coming up that are API standalone products. So very exciting. I think Josh has had an API program since at least 2017, I think. Actually, the founder of our API program is speaking next, right after us. So stay tuned in that with David. Um, but yeah, it's we're still still building more and more products. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting that you mentioned that you've had this program since 2017. Because if I think back, um, I think to me, um, Telstra hasn't really been like a traditional software company. So what's really changed? Um, in the landscape for you guys to take on this more API led um, sort of like strategy? Yeah, it's so essential. Like it's not even an option. And I, I know um, like Aaron, you were saying before how you really like working with Telstra because they have all these extra things like APIs and that. And I think that's great. But and now I think it's like it, it has to be a given. Like if you want to have a product today, I mean, yesterday I was listening to the one of the presentations and they were talking about Canvas API program, right? Like this, that's a design product. You don't expect them to have, you know, APIs, but I think it's in this digital world, I think in the last couple of years, if anything has changed, it's become more of a necessity rather than a nice to have. And I think, um, especially when you think of it, a telco, net, the network kind of underpins every single thing that you do. Like if you're not using Telstra, someone in your supply chain is, whether it's you know, the people delivering your posts or where you buy your groceries, like they're in the chain somewhere. Um, and so all of those customers need to be digitized. And so we need to digitize as well, I guess. And it's really funny because it used to, in 2017, when we were at first at API days and we had some really, really great um, evangelists back then too, it was really about telling people this is an API. Like it wasn't really well known what an API is or why some need it. But now it's really about like, we have them, what more can we do? How can we be better? So if anything's changed in those last few years, I think it's the maturity of of us, I guess, is understanding what APIs is, maturity of the customers and what they're demanding of us and what they're expecting of us. So, yeah, it's, it's um, this morning um, our CEO, Andy Penn, was speaking at the Investor Day and I was just shocked and amazed and excited to be hearing him talk about APIs, APIs, APIs. Um, so I think all of us in this API Days community have done a really good job uh, in the last couple of years in bringing up that. I, I think a key point then, Michelle, is four out of five customers using Tracker Monitor are using the API. So if mm. Telstra didn't have an API, would they have considered maybe using a competitive product? Yeah, really good point, Aaron. And I think I'll emphasize the bit that the number one customer only uses the API. Like it's like I said, it's not even an option anymore. It's like if we want to actually serve these complex, large enterprise government big customers, um, you need to have an API. So, yeah. Yeah. That definitely sounds like a combination of cultural change and also just how interconnected we are. Um, I want to thank you both so much for joining us today and speaking with our stream. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the talk and I think everyone else did too. So thank you. Thanks, thank Catherine. You. Thanks, API Days. Thanks, Deloitte. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>